Hello everyone, I'm the generally beautiful and Marana Kak, and I'm proud to present my next video review on the Ultimate Spider-Man series. This month I am critiquing issues 7 through 9, which acts as the start of the new current story arc. Watching this video and haven't seen my previous review, I encourage you to watch them first to understand my viewpoints and critiques. Also, there will be spoilers so that I may go as in-depth as needed for my review. With all that said, let's begin. Issue 7 kickstarts the new arc for Ultimate Spider-Man and focuses on forwarding our new conflicts for the next 5 issues. We have hints of Kingpin establishing his own Sinister Six, we get suit upgrades for Harry and Peter, and finally Ben and Jonah now have a new lead for their ongoing investigation on Wilson Fisk. This issue is mainly focused on progressing the ongoing plot and subplots established from the first arc. A majority of the comic is focused on providing new exposition on Peter's and Harry's suits. Octavius explains the unique properties and abilities the suits contain, with Harry and Peter giving their commentary. Interestingly, because this version of Peter chose to dedicate his studies to photography and journalism, this Peter lacks any scientific background for his career, a major departure from his many other incarnations. It makes you wonder if Hickman has any future story ideas that explores Peter's lack of scientific knowledge, or if this is merely a minor character change to make this version of Peter stand out. Jumping slightly ahead, I am glad that Marco is here for these three issues, and hopefully he stays for issues 10 through 12. In regards to his art in issue 7, it's serviceable, tells the story cleanly and clearly. I wish I could provide more insight on the art, but considering the comic is heavy on dialogue and only has one small action scene, it's not necessary to see Marco go all out on a slightly mundane issue. As this series goes on, issue 7 will be one of many comic issues that does its job to forward the plot and nothing else, which isn't a bad thing. Moving on to issue 8 and we continue the trend of having a more slow paced and dialogue focused issue with a sprinkle of plot progression. I won't say that nothing happens in this issue as that is factually incorrect, but I can say that the plot takes a back seat in order to focus more on character development. In particular, more than half the issue is focused on Jameson's and Uncle Ben's subplot with their brand new newspaper business. There are no thrills in this comic so this issue heavily relies on the interactions with our characters and Hickman delivers on that front. As the reader we get a better understanding of Jonah's and Ben's relationship. You can clearly tell these men have been working together for years and that their bond is thicker than blood. As well, I do like how Jonah fits naturally within the Parker family dynamic, especially with Peter's son Richard, who acts as a sort of uncle figure to him. I very much look forward to seeing Jonah be more a part of Peter's world and the potential stories Hickman can tell with them. Aside from that, the beginning and any of the comic hints on future conflicts for Spider-Man. I am intrigued on what Hickman has in store for the AI version of Peter that is in, in store in his advanced costume, and we finally have our proper introduction to our new Sinister Six, Kingpin, Mr. Negative, The Black Cat, Craven, Mysterio, and the most surprising, the dreadful looking Mole Man. With our new antagonist finally on stage, I am ecstatic to see what this second arc of the series has in store. We arrive now at our current issue as of this video with Ultimate Spider-Man number 9. After two issues of heavy dialogue and exposition, the story is starting to wrap up again with a proper start to the confrontation between Spider-Man, Green Goblin, and the Sinister Six. As well, after nine issues of build-up, Jameson's and Ben's brand new independent newspaper business is up and running. And in another funny twist on the traditional Spider-Man story, Jameson is actually reporting and writing positive coverage of Spidey's crime fighting. And lastly, in an interesting development for Peter Parker, he chooses to forgo the suit Tony Stark gave him back in issue 1 and is given a less advanced spandex Kevlar costume with none of the high-tech features. My mind races onto what Jonathan Hickman has planned for the future of Spidey's Pico suit. It is clear, especially from issue 8, that Hickman has something planned for that suit and the AI version of Peter that is stored within it. And not to mention that the Iron Spider suit auto-developed 
will undoubtedly play a key role when Otto inevitably becomes Dr. Octopus. Of course, I'm speculating, and Hickman is doing a great job of keeping the reader in the dark of all the surprises he has in store. I also want to highlight the Black Cat fight, not for the actual fight itself, which is a serviceable start to the conflict, but for clearly defining Peter's and Harry's motivations and morality. I hope to see as the duel continues to fight Fisk and his evil team that we get a well-written conflict of opposing viewpoints and morals. From this issue, we clearly see that while Peter and Harry are bonding closer over their mission and becoming friends, that friendship will be tested when they are forced to choose their bond or their ideals. Finally, I want to acknowledge Matthew Wilson's coloring. He has colored every issue of Marcos thus far, and in this particular issue, I really love how well he was able to color the characters when the sky is at desk. That's not a time of day often used, especially in Spider-Man stories. Because of his bright costume, artists will usually use day or night, as both the black and blue sky make a great contrast to the colors of the costume, and it's much easier to simply color something at night or during the middle of the day. The fact that the fight is at dusk is a great creative decision to make the fight more visually interesting with a pinkish purple sky and how that unique light affects the colors of our costume characters, notably on Green Goblin. Halfway through our second arc and I'm excited by the potential story that Hickman is writing and seeing more beautiful and well-made art done by Marco. My hope is that since issues 7 and 8 were made to set up the stakes and conflict of this story arc, the rest of the issues can focus on exciting storytelling with action, metal drama, and creative twists that are hard to predict. As well, I would like to see Marco draw the next three issues, but if need be, we can just have one issue done by a fill-in artist. And that ends my review of Ultimate Spider-Man issues 7 through 9. Share your thoughts below on what you think of this story arc thus far, and make sure you subscribe to the Hack Jack Show to catch the next review of Ultimate Spider-Man, which is slated for early January of the new year. Thank you for watching, and this is Hack, signing off.